They're getting billed by the hour, and it gets expensive. And people need to realize that. The more acrimonious it is, the, the smaller the things that they're willing, to, that the parties are willing to fight for, uh, the more they get to bill. Attorneys get paid by the hour. The more accusations they make towards the other side, the more things they ask you to send them, the more papers they file with the courthouse, the more they earn, and the more it costs you. One party files something, you have to respond. If you don't respond, you either lose by default, or if it's a contempt petition, you land yourself in jail. You're a lawyer, you write a nasty letter. Her lawyer has to write a nasty letter. It's just a great system. Essentially paper the other side until they can't take it anymore. It's just paperwork after paperwork after paperwork after paperwork. And there are no limits. When attorneys get started, they have no incentive to stop until you run out of money. You have lawyers who are in it for the money, who are greedy, who will milk a case. If your case is taking years and years, then that means some attorneys just putting in a lot of frivolous motions to delay the case. In the 60s, it would take a few months, a year. Now cases drag on five, six, seven, eight years. Which is extremely expensive, as you can imagine. The attorneys definitely don't want to settle the cases because once they do, their income stream has been cut off. And the lawyers have been granted complete immunity in family court. A lawyer can say or do anything, no matter how false or cruel, and waste tens of thousands of dollars intentionally and maliciously, and they cannot be sued for malicious prosecution or excessive litigation. I'm not aware of any case where a lawyer was sued for being overly zealous. Did you ever hold an attorney in contempt? No. I really didn't have the heart to do that. I would see them privately, maybe when we had lunch afterwards. No, because he's doing his job, and you just, and however pitiful his case was, I'm reluctant to embarrass attorneys. With such high rates and no consequences for over-litigating, the money in the marriage is often spent before the divorce is even finished. So how do people pay for all this? When the liquid cash went out, at that point there, he says, well, I understand you have a $100,000 line of credit, which I had to go ahead and use that in order to pay uh, for my legal defense. A lot of people go into debt as a result of their divorces. Some attorneys automatically put a lien on your house just to make sure that eventually they get paid. We took out an equity line of credit at my parents' house, and that's been maxed out now. Uh, I think it's $250,000. What they do is bleed you until all the money is gone. And if that isn't enough, the court can even order you to sell everything you own. The judge looks through here and he says to me, you really messed this up. Next time I see you in my court, I'm going to order your land sold so you can get attorneys. Your home, your, your valuables are all going to be sold to pay the lawyers and people like me. The court does regularly liquidate an asset, sell the house, to pay that person to do their job. So the court system has become the marketeer and the under threat of a court order of contempt have ordered you to comply with it and then has ordered you to pay it and, 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 and will then collect it for them as their collection agency. The legal system, like many of the other systems in our country, turns around money. And money makes a big difference on everything. It's not what we think of in America, but it's the reality of America. You didn't have family law firms in the old days because the people who ran the big firms weren't interested in doing family law. There was no money in it. Once houses started to go up in value and more money came into the family law system, some of those big firms did get interested in family law. The cases became much bigger, so a divorce became a business-type trial. It's not surprising that the average contested divorce in the U.S. costs $50,000. In the last 40 years, the number of divorce lawyers has exploded, increasing over 2,000% in California alone. And this is a nationwide issue. No matter what state you live in, you're going to get pulled in. We're all part of this machine that makes divorce a business. It is a business, and I'm not ashamed to say that. This is how I feed my family. This is how I keep a roof over my head. 
This is how I put gas in my Rolls Royce.